You should do purple, that's my favorite color. Oh, I should have done this. You know there's such a thing called color theory. Okay, never mind, that's not, that's not what this video is about. I remember when I first started learning to code. I struggled to understand even basic concepts like recursion or classes. How did I go from a struggling beginner to an experienced developer now? That's the journey we're gonna take today. In 2015, after my A-levels, I thought I had my career path all figured out. I was set on studying finance and had even secured an internship in the field. But as I spent more time in the industry, I realized this wasn't something I was truly passionate about. So when my father suggested I explore computer science or engineering instead, I decided to give it a shot. I had enjoyed my computer classes in secondary school and had a blast creating templates using HTML and CSS for my blog. But I had never considered pursuing it as a career. Nevertheless, I enrolled in a computer engineering program in the National University of Singapore. The first few days of university were really amusing to me. I met so many people from different backgrounds and skill levels, from those who had been coding since they were like 10, to people like me who had little to no experience at all. There were even those who had already pre-read all of the courses beforehand. One of the best modules that was assigned to me was programming methodology. I got to learn the ABCs of coding, integers, double, float, and string, in an awesome language that I'll never forget, C. This is like the best thing ever! Yeah, I was being sarcastic. Learning C was a nightmare to me. All of a sudden I realized HTML and CSS were nothing compared to this actual programming language. I had such a hard time grasping memory management concepts and the syntax. It was challenging, but so worth it. Because now, no matter what any company throws my way, I know I can handle it like a pro. The take-home lab assignments in my first year of university was so much fun, and I really enjoyed myself. I was slowly falling in love with programming, so I did enjoy what I was doing. But every time I would learn something new, I would be so overwhelmed with information and new concepts to register. I constantly found myself in the middle of the bell curve, but never the top 10%, which did make me doubt myself a lot especially when I compared myself to my peers. It may have been my scarcity mindset, but I thought if I wasn't the best at it or even the top, I was probably really bad at it. Maybe I love programming, but it didn't love me back. In the year 2016, after mastering the basics of programming in C, I then moved on to Java where I delved into the world of data structures and algorithms. I learned about the intricacies of arrays, linked lists, queues, and stacks. One of the most life-changing modules I took this year was my software engineering module. For the first time, I was introduced to this fascinating aspects of programming, such as natural language processing and designing user interfaces. This module helped me understand how different things I was learning were fitting together. It's like different pieces of the puzzles suddenly started to fit, and I could see the bigger picture. It makes perfect sense now. The module was tough and we had a ton of sleepless nights, but it was so much fun. It made me feel so alive. And I didn't want to stop working on the project we were building, which was a to-do list application. We could add features and make the application look aesthetic, which was an aspect I really enjoyed. I got my first A that year and I thought, maybe I'm not as bad as I think I am. Software engineering, that's something I saw myself doing. So lesson number one, this may sound like something that you would see in a coffee cup, but if you are really passionate about something, don't give up. You may be a lot closer to that feeling of accomplishment and your goals than you think you are. Another win for me was getting into NOC and US Overseas Colleges program where I got to study and work in San Francisco for a year. I had been dreaming of going for this program since I joined the university, so getting in was a big deal for me. But the year 2017 started off rough. Since I studied computer engineering, I also had to work with LPC microprocessors and program them using C, which was kind of fun but very annoying. Along with overloading the modules I was taking, I also had to find a job in San Francisco for my NOC program. My university did help us secure interviews, but getting past them was another story. I had no idea what to prepare for an interview for a software engineer role. After about five interviews, I finally realized I should probably brush up on my data structures and algorithms and spam lead code which worked, I got an offer. But the interview process made me realize I knew nothing about being a software engineer and working for a company. I didn't want to screw up my job at a company in SF. So before embarking on a one year long internship, I decided to get a three months internship in Singapore. Working at a small startup with less than 10 people in Singapore was a blast. I got opportunity to learn about front end engineering and even discovered what Angular was. As time went by, things started to slowly fall into place. I had only touched the front end and I liked it. So I thought, maybe that's what I'll be, a front end engineer. 
In San Francisco, I started my internship at a startup with five people and studied on the side as well and traveled a lot. I started working mostly on front-end tasks using React as I thought I would be a front-end engineer. But since this internship was pretty long and lasted a year, I also began to slowly pick up aspects of backend engineering. Initially, the backend was quite intimidating to me. Words like API, database, SQL, SQS, S3 all sounded like a foreign language that I didn't understand. I have no idea what you're talking about. Which made me feel like I wouldn't be good at it at all. These were not really things that I had learned in university in a certain module or something. I then figured that I'm someone who learns by doing, rather than simply reading the theory behind it. So when I got the chance to create my own database, query it, and write an endpoint, I slowly started to appreciate the magic of the backend and realized it isn't as difficult as I think it is. So lesson number two, figure out how you learn. This will change your life like it did in mine. I was suddenly able to pick up things so much faster because I finally figured that I learn by doing. So if I want to pick up a theoretical concept, I have to apply that and see what the practical applications are to answer all of the millions of questions I usually have. 2018, I came back home to Singapore for my last year of university. By now I knew what I wanted to do with my life, become a software engineer. So instead of worrying about my cap or GPA, I decided to take fun modules to celebrate my last year at university. I dived into machine learning, specifically image processing and recognition. And with my teammates, I even built a dance move detection device using motion sensors and machine learning again. We created a model that learns and outputs what your dance move was. It was actually really cool. Since I was in my last year of university, I had to figure out what I wanted to do next. I did enjoy my time in SF and had an opportunity to go back there. But I was bounded by a scholarship agreement to stay in Singapore, so that's what I did. Through some NOC connections, I secured a full-time role as a backend engineer at a mid-sized company in Singapore. This was an e-commerce company and I worked there for two years and felt a ton of imposter syndrome for most of those two years. I had mainly worked on the front end in my previous experiences, which were not a lot. So now entering a role as a backend engineer was daunting. Also, the code base was in PHP, which I had no idea about, so that was another challenge to overcome. If I'm honest with myself, I had a lot to learn, which I did. I had the opportunity to have a lot of kind and generous colleagues who were willing to share knowledge and guide me. I was afraid to speak up in architectural sessions or give ideas because of my lack of experience and knowledge in the area. I just felt like I wasn't good enough to give my opinions, or most of the time I didn't even have much opinions to give. I don't know if other new engineers go through this as well, but looking back, I would have done so many things differently at my first job, but hindsight is 2020, as they say. Moving on from 2020, in 2021, I embarked on a new adventure. Being stuck in Singapore during the pandemic kind of made me want to desperately get out of the country. So 2021 February, I started applying to tech companies in Berlin. I wanted to work at a big company with more than a thousand people to experience a different kind of environment. 2021 March, I got an offer and in June, I was in Berlin, ready to start my second ever software engineering job. This time, as a full stack engineer, I've been at this company for close to two years now and I've grown a lot. Having learned everything I did in my previous experiences has now given me the ability to apply knowledge and skills confidently. When I started this job, I could feel a shift within me as I had become more confident in the way I code, I have an opinion about things, and I play a part in architectural sessions, sometimes even lead them. If you're like me and starting off your career into tech, know that feeling not good enough is okay. In these eight years, I felt that feeling so many times. Programming is not an easy field to be in. There's so many new things that you must constantly learn and update yourself with. And being a minority in this industry doesn't make it any easier either. Once you prove to yourself through small wins that you are competent, you would slowly be able to gain confidence. I still have so much more to learn as a programmer. There's so many things I don't know yet, but that's really the fun part of the job. So this has been my eight years of programming journey so far. And even though there have been times when I've struggled, I don't think I ever felt like I wanted to give up because this is a field and a job that I truly enjoy so much. Like coding has become a form of meditation for me. If I'm just coding, me and my text editor, I kind of forget about the world and just want to solve that one problem right now. And it's such an amazing feeling when you build something that actually makes a difference to someone else. So that's the past eight years. But if you want to see what happens in the future, keep watching my day in the life videos and see how I grow as an engineer. I will see you in the next one. Whoa. Which color do you like best? <laughs>